Hi everybody, I just want to share for a couple minutes what is on my heart. Sorry about all the noise in the background. Um, I find that the deepest growth and freedom comes from the deepest struggle and um, we don't know that we're growing until we step out and try, you know, to do the will of the Lord. But even before we do that, even before we step out and do the will of the Lord, we are growing. We are growing through the struggle and the sweetest fragrance is from the squeezed um, grapes, if I can use that as an example, or the sweetest fragrance is from something that had to be extracted. Essential oils uh, come from the rinds of fruits like orange and lemon and grapefruit and so forth. But they had to be ground up. They had to be crushed, processed, and squeezed so that the oil could come out. And I'm sure it takes a lot of orange rinds for that to happen, or lemons. In a Christian's life, there's a lot of squeezing, a lot of grinding, a lot of crushing to get the fragrance of Jesus in our lives. It takes a lot for that to happen because of the resistance of our flesh. Our flesh fights against it. Our flesh does not want to succumb to humility. We can talk about humility all day long and how much we want to be humble, like in this song that I just sang. But to become humble is not a pleasant journey. Um, to become humble and to get our eyes off ourselves and to begin to actually look and resemble some of the characteristics of Galatians 5, 22 and 23, takes a lot of crushing and a lot of grinding and a lot of, you know, struggle, um, a lot of squeezing. The pain that happens during this is enough to make you want to retreat. It's enough to make you want to give up. But Jesus never gave up. He never gave up even though he was fully God and fully human at the same time on his journey on the earth, he never gave up. He didn't retreat. He didn't run away. And he is my example. It is only by his help and his strength that I don't retreat and give up. Or you, my friend. What is it that keeps you going? If you're a believer, what is it that keeps you going every day? Are you giving that credit to God? Are you thinking about what has brought you to the place that you're at right now? Sometimes when we're going through the struggle, we literally feel like we've been run over by a Mack truck and then he backed up and ran over us again a few more times. But when we're being ran over, you know, like Paul talked about being crushed and perplexed and all the things that he mentioned in that list, those disciples went through some real hell and high water. And I could never compare what they went through to my life because I don't know what, what they felt I don't know exactly what it all looked like. I only know what I feel and what 
I feel like my life is like. You know what I mean? That was a lot of likes in there. Sorry about that. But I know that the struggle that you're going through and the struggle I'm going through are our struggles. And comparing them to somebody else is not going to make them any lighter. It might make us more grateful, but it isn't going to take away the pain that we feel in our own struggle. And God does not line us up all side by side along a wall and say, well, Johnny, why are you compare? Why are you um, upset when, you know, you have it so much better than Sally or, you know, Johnny, you need to stop complaining because, you know, down the road, so-and-so doesn't have any food. So why are you complaining? God doesn't do that. God deals with us as children like a father would, but a perfect father. A father that does not just lose his temper and beat us because he's had enough or he's had a long day or he's just tired of our personal problems. It's actually the opposite. He has unending patience and love for his children. And the way that he deals with us is as a perfect father, not a absent father or a father that is unskilled or a father that has been through trauma or a father that doesn't have any time for us because he's always working. He's a different kind of father. He's an ever-present help in times of trouble and in times of no trouble. He's just always there. We just don't realize how present he really is. And so the beginning of this talk was about being squeezed and going through really excessive trials. And your trials may not be seen by anyone around you. They might just be something that you are going through in your own being. Other people may look at you and not know that you're going through anything. But the beauty is God sees the heart. Man, he looks at the outward appearance. He judges the outward appearance, your facial expression, you know, just the condition that you look like you're in. But God sees the inside, whether you're prospering on the outside or not. In fact, you might look like a wreck and might be doing great on the inside because you are coming out of a rock tumbler, if you know what that is. You're coming out of, you know, an excessively difficult time. And the beauty is God was with you in that, just like he was with those three men in the fiery furnace. They weren't by themselves. So whatever it is you're going through, don't compare yourself to anybody else. Just instead know that God, who is full of compassion and tender mercy, is there with you in whatever you are facing. The beauty of having a relationship with your creator is Jesus Christ who came to the earth and is the mediator between us and God. The beauty of having this is you have someone who will never leave you or forsake you. People come and go all the time and they mean well, and sometimes they don't. But I can tell you that they will always let you down. And God will not and cannot let you down. Yes, sometimes we think he's let us down, but the fact is he hasn't. We live in such a screwed up world. We live with ourselves and we're screwed up. So the things that we experience in this life are not at the fault of God. We live in just a really messed up world. A beautiful world that's messed up. 
And it's messed up because mankind messed it up. God didn't create a messed up world. So while you're going through your squeezing and your trying trial, whether it's within you or outside of you or both, when you come out of it, you will not believe how beautiful it can be because if it's put into God's hands, only time will tell, but you will be a changed person. But it takes a lot of sanding and a lot of rock tumbling and a lot of fire to get a really massive mess into something beautiful. Now, yes, God could just do it instantly, but what what profit would there be in that? Plus, he doesn't go against your will. He doesn't fight against you. If you are his child and you've chosen this way, then he will do the work in you, but it's going to take time. Thanks so much for listening. I appreciate all of you. And I just want to, to let you know that you're going to make it. We'll see you next time.